if your partner has a need to be nurtured and you don't want to nurture because of the patriarchy or whatever you've made up about what nurturing means, then you're going to have an issue that may not be solvable unless you talk about it, unless you admit to it. And so it is what he means when he says, stop being so masculine. Ladies, I know this is a difficult and tough subject. And I promise you where I'm coming from and what I'm about to bring is not only 40 years of my own internal research, but I've been working with men for the last 10 years in different forms and fashions. And it's the exact same thing I've been hearing from men and then the opposite of what I've been hearing from women when working with them. And so when a man says, stop being so masculine, or when he implies that you're being so masculine and it triggers you, it hurts you, I want you to first understand that if he is even willing to say that, he's already at his edge. If he's even willing to say it to you, he's at the point where he's potentially either thinking about leaving or he's doubting whether you are the right woman for him. And in the most sobering, loving way I could say this, I know it's not your fault. I understand, and anybody can understand if we look at our society, our mothers and their mothers grew up in a patriarchal society, you too, where women were told and taught that they were lower class citizens, that they weren't worthy of being in the boardroom. And so their place was in the bedroom and man's place was in the boardroom. And so in the 1980s, when that pendulum swung, there was this like women's empowerment, I'll take on the world, I'll be the CEO, I'll be this, that, and the other. And women took on both, which sucks. And so the offspring of your mothers and, 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 and their understanding of the load that they were carrying came with not just what you saw modeled, but what you heard them say, like never depend on a man. And all of this swirled up in this beautiful, sometimes toxic combination of jambalaya causes this conflict in relationships where men, and this is where I'm going to break this down for you, men grew up with extremely well-meaning mothers who loved on them, kissed on them, took care of them, unconditionally loved on these little boys. And then they go out into the world, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 25, 35, and they come into a relationship with another woman who was taught not to be vulnerable, not to depend on a man. Take care of your own money, take care of your own housing, take care of your own everything. Never depend on a man because if you do, he will take it from you, he will use it, he will dangle it and use it as power. So you, young lady, take care of yourself. Now you put those two together. A young man, who grew up with a mother who was extremely unconditionally loving and nurturing. And then you put him with a, a little girl who watched her mother struggle in such a way that she decided she would never, ever be like that. And then you put those two together and say, hey, you guys love on each other. What may come forward is a lot of conflict and confusion because oftentimes what men say a lot is that I never hear from her unless it's something I'm doing wrong. And often what we're calling wrong is not wrong truly, it's just wrong in her eyes. And I don't get credit for all the things I am doing. I just hear from her passionately and emotionally how I'm wrong, how I'm not showing up, who I'm not being, what I'm not bringing to the table. And so when a man says, Please just stop being so masculine. He's 
oftentimes really masking that by just saying, hey, can I get a little more nurturing from you? I get it. I'm, I'm painfully aware that I'm not as smart as you and I'm not into personal development as enough and I don't watch this podcast and I don't make this money and I haven't figured out this thing and I'm not having this much sex and I'm not X, Y, and Z, whatever it is, he's painfully aware of it because that's what he's hearing from you. When he hears from you in a passionate way, it's about the stuff that he's not doing in your eyes right. And so men, especially because biologically, we are hunters. We have a, uh, a, a very strict focus. And so if I have this strict focus and I'm doing this thing and I'm not getting credit for it, and then you have a diffused focus, gatherer, and you're noticing everything. It's the socks on the floor. It's the this, it's the that, it's the this, it's the that. Hey, you just got home. You better be on it. You X, Y, and Z, all of that. Plus you're not loving me enough. I feel unseen. I feel unsafe. And you keep, this is what men say, hear me. You keep moving the target. At some point, he's going to say, this is a game I can't win. She's not going to give me credit. She's not going to let me in. There's too many hoops that I need to jump through in order to get her to lower her wall and love on me and herself in a nurturing way so that we can have this idea of love that I thought relationships were. And so ladies, I mean this from the bottom of my heart. I'm not in any way suggesting that men don't have our work to do. But what I am suggesting is that if you would like to keep your relationship and it's with a man, it would be super helpful to put more deposits in, also known as bids for love. I understand that some of you right now are saying to yourself, but I clean the house. And that is, that is a loving thing. It's a beautiful thing. And it doesn't mean he doesn't clean the house. It doesn't mean he doesn't clean the yard. But does that register as love to him? Because if it doesn't, then no matter how much house cleaning you do, he's still not going to feel nurtured by you. And I understand that some of you are saying, well, those are gender roles and I don't want to be nurturing. Okay. Awesome. That's okay too. But you now need to have a conversation because if your partner has a need to be nurtured and you don't want to nurture because of the patriarchy or whatever you've made up about what nurturing means, then you're going to have an issue that may not be solvable unless you talk about it, unless you admit to it. Ladies, I'm going to say it again. I know that you do a lot and that you hold a lot, but I want to remind you that men do as well. That this world is very challenging to navigate. And when the one person that's supposed to be on your team, the one person that's supposed to be the safe space, the place you go home to, that's, that's supposed to feel like a soft pillow, because this man is not being, he's not having his friends rub through his hair and tell him it's going to be okay when things go down. He doesn't have that set up. It's why men commit suicide way more than women do. It's why men die earlier than women do. Because he doesn't have that type of community or that type of setup. And so if at home, it feels just like it feels outside, then he's going to come to himself at some point and say, well, why would I even be in this if it feels just like the rest of the world? Hear me loud and clear. We're all doing our best. I know you're not trying to hurt him and I know you're not trying to push him away. I challenge you to just give 5% more. What would it look like for you to ask him, hey baby, what would make you feel extremely loved on this week? And then whatever he says, you just try to do it. Oftentimes in relationships, we can, we can get in that conversation of, but I did X, Y, and Z. And we start counting. The moment you're counting, You're in trouble. We are all giving. We're all sacrificing. And like I said, your man, I'm not discounting that, that, that he has work to do. 
I'm not saying he's a perfect being. I just want you to understand what's going on in his mind when he asks you to stop being so masculine. The world, the world is already beating him up enough. If the majority of what he hears from you is who he's not and what he's not doing right, he's going to leave. Blessings and blessings. If this stirred something up in you and you'd like to leave a comment or you'd like to share this and discuss it, please do. I just want you to know that as a, as a person who's been in a relationship almost 10 years, married for six, I know it's not easy. This is the hardest workshop that I've ever been in. And it's also the most fulfilling. And it's also the most, the, nothing has ever evolved me like a powerful conscious relationship. And so I invite you to see where you still have work to do. This one isn't about him. It's about you. It's about what you can do to serve him, which ultimately serves you. We're all walking each other home to the self. And you're not in relationship with him. You're in relationship with his nervous system. You're in relationship with his seven-year-old, nine-year-old, five-year-old wounds. And so you have the opportunity. You have been blessed with the opportunity to help him heal those wounds through your extremely powerful feminine nature. Will you step in or will you step out? The choice is yours. Blessings and blessings.